33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo show that you are tuned into. Coming to you live from the South Coast in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts each and every Monday through Friday, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And on Fridays, uh, even though we've had them on a few other days of the week over the last couple of months, uh, we uh, end our week with our good friend from the great uh, 206, the uh, Renaissance man of the Jeff Santo show. He is, of course, the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is a fantastic musician, the only one that plays his way on to the Jeff Santo show with a guitar. Uh, and he is, of course, um, a great activist on a lot of issues, uh, including press freedom, uh, and the monopolization of the media in this country. Our good friend, MTC, joins us live with the glasses today from Seattle, Washington. Good day, Mr. MTC. Well, I think we have a mute. Um, <laughs> we need to we need to get the music up, my friend. <laughs> we see you playing, but we can't hear you. <laughs> so hopefully we can get that squared away, Jalen. Okay. I think on your side there, Mark. I don't know. I can't read that, Jalen. Can you? <laughs> I want... I will reboot. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Easy enough. Uh, we'll uh, try to get uh, MTC taken care of. Uh, a couple of things while we're doing this. Uh, most of you may be aware of the fact that I'm wearing a Bruins 2011 Stanley Cup sweatshirt. Uh, the Bruins are playing in Pan in, uh, in Florida tonight, uh, not far from our Boca Raton studios in Sunrise. And, um, well, frankly, uh, they, they played like, uh, you know, a dog poo-poo on uh, uh, the other night. And um, Wednesday night, I guess it was. And they better play better. They better play um, a better quality of hockey than they did then. Um, they made a lot of line changes today. I mean, it looks like it's probably going to be Swayman and Net Bergeron, their team captain and one of their best players, will not play due to some injuries. He uh, had re-aggravated in the last game of the season. And uh, they may not play until game five. In fact, the coach is saying, Coach Montgomery, that he will be uh, suited up for game five, which I guess will be Tuesday night. Uh, in Boston. So we will look for that and, and see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, there are a lot of other great uh, series going on. And we're going to chat with our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield before we go off the air and talk about the Seattle Kraken, who have been uh, cracking some some heads there. And, uh, you know, they're tied one to one with Colorado as the game comes back to Climate Pledge Arena on Saturday night. And uh, Mark will be playing outside uh, Climate Pledge Arena with about uh, 10,000 other great uh, hockey fans. Uh, it should be a big sound, a big uh, night uh, in Seattle. But we got a lot to talk about, Mark. Uh, but I think you can hear me now. Can you hear hey, me, Jeff? I can indeed. Here's that Hendrick. Rick. Way to go, man. Good to see you. How are you doing? That was a great promo Hanging for the Kraken. I appreciate that. You just saved me a lot of time. But yeah, it's tied one to one. And uh, the next game is tomorrow night. And then there's another one on Monday night. So even though that band got kicked out of the Pledge Arena or not, I'm not invited back for singing uh, a crit critical song about Jeff Bezos. It doesn't look like it's keeping any fans from supporting the Kraken, Jeff. The no. whole town is crazy about hockey right now. So, I mean, come on, we're in the... We're in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and how that's many? Right, that's right. How many years have we been in the league? What two? Two, two years, man. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be some that's kind of record, record, right? Or we could go well, all the way the back Vegas, to what? the Vegas. The Vegas team had, yeah, the Pilots. Uh, the Vegas team actually, the Golden Knights won their their the uh, Western Championship and lost the the Washington Capitals back in 2018, I think it was. But um, but you know. Hey, uh, for the second year, and you know, they you guys didn't have anywhere near the advantage that uh, uh, Vegas did in terms of draft picks and everything else that they were 
able to do so. Kudos to uh, uh, the Kraken for, um, you know, playing great hockey against the Stanley Cup champ, Colorado Avalanche. So that's a, that's yeah, a great, I mean, uh, that's a great, great. We're definitely competitive, um, you know, and, and everybody's kind of like, we're all just wide eyed and like a little kid about hockey. So we're, oh, wow, this is amazing. I've never seen this before. So uh, I think we're competitive and and some of the credit for that does go to the league for allowing such good draft picks and things. Although not, you know, yeah, you're right. Not as, not as good as that previous team you mentioned, but I think, you know, we have some good players. We don't have as much of an indigenous um, player population as you might have in Boston or uh, people in the Northeast or in Canada, but you know, we're here where we've got growing. indoor hockey rinks, yeah. Jeff. And actually yeah. lately it feels cold enough that I almost think I could go skating. It's been like really <laughs> cold here and rainy. It's been, we haven't had spring spring. Just it's the miss the bus spring. Miss the bus is late. To yeah. Work. yeah. I don't know what happened, but I haven't seen it lately. So that's yeah, what's going we, on. We've, had, the cherry we've, trees are blooming. we've had 80 degrees in one day. Another day it's uh 42 here. So I, I know what you mean. Hey, you know, it's it's great that it's there. You know, there uh, there has been minor league hockey there. And of course, we all know about uh, the uh, the Thunderbirds, and of course, Portland, just to your south, has had uh, hockey uh, there and with uh, their team was it the Winterhawks. And uh, so there's a whole slew of history. And of course, just a couple hours north of you, the Vancouver Canucks have been playing, you know, hockey since the 1970s. So you know, it, it's a great region, I think, and it's great that hockey is now in Seattle. You know, We've had the totems, actually. We had a minor league hockey team for many years, and they're still here. And my teacher, Deb Kyle, my high school teacher, one of my favorite teachers of all time, a uh, very big influence on my life, she's crazy about hockey. She has been for years, and she's played herself on a female hockey wow. team. So there, there you, go. you go. I mean, there are some people who it's just in their bones, kind of, so to speak, or something. And then there's the rest of us who are just new to it. So I'm not going to claim that I have any great expertise on the history of of uh hockey the nhl you can ask me about the chicago black Sox during the 1919 world series and i can tell you all about Sh shoeless joe jackson and the rest of them but don't ask me about right. hockey jeff we will i'm pretty cool no worries i can tell you about the hey, kraken you, and you, some you, of the bruins that's about it exactly it's no no it's all good and the bruins are involved with a tight tight uh, um uh playoff foe of their own in the Florida Panthers. But I want to talk about something that is, is happening in a senior, your great tweets on this. And that is the monopolization of media um, and the media monopolies. And, you know, we just had this whole thing with Fox, you know, I think they got away with, you know, not uh, a apologizing and not having Rupert Murdoch and all those anchors, you know, talking about the lies, all of them knew that this whole thing with Trump and, and January uh, six, you know, the idea of a phony election, they knew, they knew it was phony, but yet they went on and they lied to the American people. And that's the stuff that they should be criticized for, and they should never be allowed to not be connected to. Your thoughts on that, because that to me connects all to the power of a handful of companies that run, you know, television for that matter, and, and radio too, iHeartRadio, Humulus, you know, Westwood One, all of those companies, and that's it. And there's not a lot left there. And they've bought a lot of small stations and, you know, really has hurt local communities uh, along with yeah. corporations that flee, you know, to, uh, to to poorer countries around the world, whether it's South America or, or of course, uh, Central America and, and the Far East. So there you go. Uh, your thoughts on this, man, because this to me is really important that people understand that you know fox is a media monster it's not just tv they control a whole slew of issues of, of uh, different uh different uh tv outlets and so forth yeah they're also all over fox fox sports is everywhere obviously well yep. I, I feel like after that intro i should just start with my presentation that i made you know for the folks in the hague or whatever <laughs> you know uh, my name is Mark Taylor Canfield. I serve as executive director for Democracy News, a nonprofit organization covering challenges to democracy worldwide. You know, I feel I've given so many presentations on this, but it's good. And I really appreciate the chance to have a platform to talk about this. It's one of the most censored or underreported or unreported stories in the United States is that media monopolies are one of the reasons why we are currently ranked 42nd in the world in terms of press freedom on the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders. And as we've talked about, May 3rd is World Press Freedom Day. 
Uh, it's the 30th anniversary of World Press Freedom Day is designated by, sorry, that, that's not some secret sign. That's actually me trying to get my camera from stopping blinking. If I move too much, sometimes okay. it, it has a hard time catching up. <laughs> it's like a strobe light at my, one of my shows. But but yeah. literally, right. um, so kudos to them for even doing this. But I doubt that Antony Blinken, our U.S. Secretary of State, will even mention the fact that the United States has had a precipitous drop on the World Press Freedom Index since 2002 when we were 17th. You'll probably just talk about a lot of other countries, you know, and their problems with press freedom. But here, the media, no matter how progressive they seem to be, except for, you know, the platforms I report on, like your show, they don't seem to want to touch it. Um, I've lobbied yeah. some of the top uh, magazines, newspapers, websites in the country, and they don't want to touch it. They just keep passing on the story, so to speak. So I believe it's the obligation of every journalist and editor and publisher to report on and speak out against threats to press freedom which by their very nature, right, are threats to democracy because a functioning democracy requires a well-informed electorate. Thomas Jefferson talked about that. But we have some problems, and I do have a few uh, potential public policy and legislative uh, remedies that I've been trying to um, brief folks like Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal and her staff about. And But let's just face it, we have a problem with press freedom, and until the United States faces it, we're really going to have a hard time uh, kind of posing as the leader um, on issues having to do with democracy when we have issues here that we won't even uh, confront. And it's not a state controlled media. It's not that the government is not, you know, shutting down stations. It's corporations are doing that over uh, 200 right. stations have closed down since 2020. Well, if they're going to lie you know, about who won the election, you know, I mean, that's that's democracy 101. And, you know, I mean, that, yeah, that, that to me is, the, is the FCC. example. The FCC is also culpable in all of this for allowing or yeah. failing to regulate the public airways, failing to protect it from these corporate takeovers. So if you if you want to hear uh, a little bit, a, a few couple statistics that will kind of blow your mind, uh, let's talk about the ownership of media around the country. Because as a one of the reporters, one of the reasons that reporters with out borders is uh, very critical of the United States and our problems with press freedom is because of this corporate monopolies where independent media cannot compete. So there's just, you know, it's not viable for independent media. So here's, check this out. iHeartMedia, formerly known as Clear Channel, owns, check this out, 855, that's 855 yep. radio stations across the country. That's 160 markets, uh, including eight stations in Seattle, in my city. So... You know, and they are known for right-wing and conservative religious stations, you know, as well. They support a lot of that. The runner-up in Radio Monopolies is Cumulus Media, which owns 404 radio stations in yep. 85 markets. And they claim on their own website that uh, they reach like 250 million people through their affiliates with Westwood One, which is 9,400 affiliated stations around the country. So that's insane. I, I mean, know Jeff, it all you have well. that and then television, yep. Intercom, formerly, or Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C, formerly known as Intercom, owns 235 radio stations in 68 markets. They own 15 radio stations in Seattle, including one that I'm on wow. quite often. And then <laughs> they also, um, you know, they, they also have this other company called Tegna, which just got out by a bunch of uh, hedge fund investors. But uh, yep. they also have a huge a monopoly that reach about. 36% of all TV households. And then you have Sinclair Broadcasting. They have 200 TV stations covering 40% of all the households in the U.S. And they've been a major promoter of conservative politics in the media. Yep. And check this out, Jeff. According to OpenSecrets.org, there's a revolving door between government and lobbyists at Sinclair. So two out of three yep. Sinclair lobbyists have formerly held government jobs. And then, of course, Sinclair also uh, has TV stations they own that are Fox affiliates. So they work together. And they also, you know, share a very twisted, distorted, and a, a pre, a pre packaged propaganda point of view in terms of news. And I've heard reporters, yeah, it's you know, all complain about, about crime, 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 you know, and, and blame the black person, blame the brown person. And that's what you get. You know, it goes back to that old Don Henley tune, you know, give them the dirty laundry. And, uh, you know, from the late 80s. And this is, this is sort of where, you know, where we are. And, you know, again, when you run ads, and they could very easily take them off, Fox, during the World Series uh, last year, you know, they had these ads of these people coming across the Rio Grande like it was, you know, just a day at the beach. 
you know, going across the Rio Grande, you know, to get into the United States, you know, people die in that river. It's not like a stream. And, you know, but yet they make it out and they're coming. They're coming to take your job. They're coming to rape your daughter. They're coming to rape your wife. You know, these are evil people. And then when, what happens the other yeah. day in Kansas City, you have an 85-year-old probably believes all this nonsense. And anybody that comes close to their house, he shoots them. Like he shot the 16 year old. Yeah, uh, you can Ralph blame Yarn. Fox. I mean, look at all of that stuff that's out there perpetrating all of this. And, and again, yeah, talk sure. about gun safety and the access to guns is a part of it too, but it all connects the dots. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Ox is a pro NRA station, but they, there is, uh, or network, but uh, they have 227 affiliates across the country. They own two stations, and we call that a duopoly in the media mark in media uh in 11 out of the 15 major top us media markets so they're huge they're the most watched network on television that's one reason why i have a feeling jeff that on may 3rd on world press freedom day the united states is ranking is going to drop once more because when you have a network like that with that much power and they are obviously perpetrating you know false propaganda and you know in, in this case recently having to pay for it because of the dominion lawsuit uh with you know, I mean, it, it just it's very telling about what's happening. And, you know, we can we can try to get the FCC to stop allowing and, grow, you know, these media monopolies to grow, uh, because if we don't do that, then there's little hope for any kind of, you know, independent media in this country. But that's definitely what we need. We need more independent media. We need more public funding of independent non-corporate media. And believe me, folks, PBS and NPR are just not enough for, you know, to provide an adequate, diverse diversity of opinion and representation um, in the media markets in the United States. And that's what you need for a healthy uh, society, a healthy democracy. No doubt about so, that. You know, look, I mean, you I look, at, look, at, look at our friends in, in Western Europe, just one second, uh, Mark. And, you know, you know, you have BBC One, Two, Three, Four in the UK, and, you know, the French have their uh, versions of it too. You know, but they're, they're not, uh, you know, they're not proliferating, although, you know, there probably has begun that on the far right with Le Pen in France and so forth. You know, they don't have, you know, the right wing commentators on, you know, the most popular channels. So, you know, and, and this is the stuff that to me is just really out of control. And again, going back to the whole Fox News thing um, and, and the election, I mean, they're, they know right and wrong. And they still allow it to go on. I mean, this is the stuff that to me is just out of control. And we really need to put it into it. But I know we have limited time here. Um, well, the FCC is out of control. I testified before the FCC. They claimed that they didn't have any knowledge of these reports that they themselves <laughs> commissioned that showed the negative results of corporate media consolidation yeah. uh, media monopolies, including fewer POC and female owners of media and also less local news coverage. So what I want to do is to get our, our city counties, local legislatures and national government to start providing more public funding for independent media. I also want to uh, lobby nonprofits and NGOs and academic institutions to do that as well, because it's such an important thing for our democracy that we have independent media like this show and like a lot of the great stuff that, uh, that I tune into and that I participate in. These are not big corporate networks, and so they're really struggling. It's an uphill battle to to get any kind of mar marketing, to get any kind of a budget for advertising when you're up against these multi-billion dollar corporations. So as long as we allow the FCC to keep, you know, building, you know, allowing media monopoly, monopolies to proliferate, uh, we're going to have trouble. So in the meantime, what we could do is try to create more public funding. And also, I would suggest to local political representatives that tax credits and low or no interest loans could also help independent and startup media projects. So we need to start thinking in terms of how we're gonna provide a diverse uh, ownership and diversity of opinion in the US media. Otherwise, we're gonna see our rankings drop more and more and it'll become you know, a couple yeah. of co corporations. Well, it, it's not only the rankings that to me that are problematic is that you know, I don't think the answer is just um, you know, kind of the whole fairness doctrine thing. Because if you give 60 seconds to one side and you give 60 seconds to another, you know, the Republicans are much better at sh at shouting about hate and, and, and throwing out, you know, bombs that the other side or the progressive side has to answer. I think what we need to do is we need to have our own ownership and, and have, 
you know, whether or not you can actually own, you know, radio stations and TV and not just to have the top five corporations in America own them. And I think that to me is really critical because, you know, you just can't sort of share this. I mean, the NPR model for all the good things that they do, you know, it's, it's a he said, she said thing. And, you know, you can't really, you know, grow a, a philosophy, progressive or, you know, left or center, however you want to do it, you know, in, in, in a 30 second soundbite, it just can't be done. It's like, you, you could talk about controlling Twitter and Facebook, but again, it's the medium just doesn't allow that. And I think those are, those are things that need to be thought about, you know, for progressives, but uh, you know, it's the case. Hey, I want to get your thoughts on, uh, on, on, on another issue before we run. And that is the gun uh, violence. Um, You know, this is to me really out of control. Uh, it is happening in, in, in southern states, but the case of the, the woman in New York who turned uh, or the person she was with turned the car into the driveway was in a blue state in upstate New York, you know, probably more red uh, than New York City. But uh, nonetheless, it's it obviously happening in Texas and Kansas City, Missouri, both red states, the last two. But I, I think that <clears throat> this is another thing that deserves massive attention from our political leaders. I don't know if Jay Inslee has said anything or any of the local uh, city leaders there in Seattle, but we need others because Joe Biden really isn't spending much time on this. And he has to, in my opinion. You know, there are Washington uh, and Oregon um, are are, uh, very rural states and there's a lot of forest here and mountains and places where people hunt. And so there are actually a lot of very responsible gun owners in the Northwest. That's right. Um, it's a different attitude than the, the you know, care, open carry laws and things like that. Um, I think uh, up here, uh, open carry makes people a little bit nervous, you know, because it's too easy to just grab your, your weapon during any kind of a confrontation. Um, so and also, you know, we've had issues with the police department being overly aggressive, not just the Seattle Police Department, but other police departments like in Tacoma, where they like two officers actually murdered Manny Ellis. So um, I think people have a different attitude up here. We do have some new um, gun legislation that's just gone through the state legislature that Jay Inslee supported. So, you know, uh, rational, you know, reasonable gun control, uh, try, ways to try to stop these kinds of shootings are very important. And if you want to talk of an issue that will get you elected uh by appealing to young people you've got it right there i've talked about the rally up here that dave matthews and our grammy award-winning singer brandy carlisle were a part of where they were singing bob dylan songs and stuff to a very young crowd we need a young president we need somebody much younger than joe biden somebody who's not in their 80s (laughs) we need um, somebody who will talk about climate change somebody who will talk about uh gun violence somebody who will talk about uh student debt somebody who will talk about raising the minimum wage. These are all the issues that will get young people really excited. And you'll have another Bernie Sanders style movement in the country where tons and tons of people will start to register to vote again. So until the Democrats figure that out, I'm telling you, Joe, uh, uh, okay, you know, yeah. say it ain't so, Joe. <laughs> Tell me you're not gonna run again, please. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I had to throw that out a right. tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. uh, that's the way it has to happen to do the, the best thing for the country uh, President Biden and uh, decide your one term and do all the things that need to be done on Ukraine on uh, health care on uh, gun violence and everything else Mark Taylor Canfield have yourself a great weekend check him out on YouTube we'll talk to you next week uh, MTC enjoy it and good luck to your Kraken Yes, and happy Earth Day, everybody. It's Earth Day is coming right. up happy this weekend. And check out my song, Mother Freedom, at YouTube. It's my music video dedicated to people fighting for there justice around the world. See you, Jeff. Thank you, MTC, for all you do, man. Have a great weekend. I want to thank Jalen and Josh for producing this broadcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. Keep on fighting peacefully, and I mean that. Uh, until Monday, my name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I Gotta go.